Welcome to a basic introduction to keyframe assistance and the speed graph using Adobe After Effects. Most animators, when they're talking about movement, refer back to something called the 12 Basic Principles of Animation. And they were created by the original Walt Disney Studios animators. I'm going to put a link to a really good presentation called The Illusion of Life on Vimeo. These are the 12 principles, squash and stretch, anticipation, staging, straight ahead and pose to pose, slow in, slow out, arcs, follow through and overlapping, secondary action, appeal, timing, exaggeration, and solid drawings. Not all of these apply to motion graphics. They're more about cell animation. But the ones we're definitely dealing with today would be squash and stretch, slow in and slow out, and timing. As we keep going, we are going to be dealing with anticipation, follow through, secondary action, but not today. Today is mainly about squash and stretch, slow in and out. So let's get started. I have put this basic presentation up for you and you see that we have a ball moving across the screen. If we hit the U button, we can see that the position has been created a keyframe, two keyframes. When the ball starts moving at the beginning of this keyframe, it is immediately going as fast as it's ever going to go. And let's say it's going 100 miles an hour. It immediately starts going 100 miles an hour, and then it goes 100 miles an hour until it stops. That's not how things move. Think about a car. It's not going to immediately go 60 miles an hour. It's going to slowly ramp up to that. And then as it slows, as it gets closer to ending, it's going to slow down. So this is not a normal movement. When you create a keyframe, it's going to default to just be normal like this. If you click on the word position, you should be able to see your motion path. That's the actual path that this is taking across the screen. If you don't see it on your computer, make sure to go up to View, Show Layer Controls. Now, that's the actual motion path that it is taking across the screen. It is not the speed. If we want to see the speed that it's going, we need to open the speed graph. That is this little button right here. And you can see it's going 600 pixels a second from the very first keyframe all the way to the end. So let's watch that again. The speed is consistent. Now let's change that motion path and see if it changes the speed. So I'm going to click on position, make sure I'm on the keyframe, and I'm just going to change this motion path by using the handles. Notice that the path has changed, but the speed hasn't. It's still going exactly the same. And like I said, think about this. If this was actually moving like this, wouldn't it do, it would go kind of slower, like as you're walking up the hill, you go slower. And then you start going faster as you're going down the hill. So this needs to change. We are going to be dealing with the speed graph, but let's look at the presets first. If you go to the next composition, you'll have, see I have four balls going across the screen doing the exact same thing. Click on one, control A to select all layers, and then hit then click P. You can see that position keyframes have been added to all of these layers. So on the first one, I want us to just leave it as normal. But on the second one, I want us to try and change the speed. Easy ease on last key. So we're going to go to the last keyframe, click on it, right click, and go to keyframe assistant. Now there's three different ones that are mainly here. We're just going to use easy ease. Easy ease means it's just going to figure it out for us. So I'm going to click on that. And actually, let's turn these other two off so you can see the difference between normal and the one with easy ease. You see how it kind of eases in. So easy ease is the easiest thing to throw on either a beginning or an ending keyframe. Uh, so that's how easy ease works. Let's move on to the next one. This one says to put eases on both sides. So first, we're going to go to the beginning one. We're going to right click keyframe assistant, but this time I want us to think about it. This would be easing out. Think how you ease out as you're pulling away in a car. So that is an ease out. Now let's go to the last one. We're going to click keyframe assistant and say ease in. Let's see how these look. You can see this one down here. It does ease out and then it slows down again before it ends. So kind of look at these and think about it. How is this changing? Let's look at what it did to the graph editor. Let's look at these with the graph editor. I'm going to turn off the middle two. You can see this speed is just going straight ahead, not adding anything to it. The second one, if we add that into the situation, you can see that it 
started off and then it really started to slow down. That was the one that had easy ease just on the first part. Now you realize it did have to change the first keyframe because it's all relative. It only has a few seconds to get across. So it may have to change the first keyframe speed. Let's look at this last one. Turn these two off. The one that's easy ease on both. Notice that it eases into being fast. Then it goes as fast as it can right here. And then it goes back down. So take a few minutes to really look at those. You can turn them all on at one time by selecting all of the layers and see the difference between them with the speed. They all have the exact same motion path, but and they're going in the same keyframes in the same amount of time, but they're dealing with that time differently. So this last one, I'm going to let us just mess with the graph editor all by itself. So turn all of them off except for that bottom one. And let's just try to deal with this ourselves. So with the graph editor, you're just going to pick up the keyframe and you can only move up or down as far as the actual keyframes go. These little yellow handles will change the amount. So let's say we want it to start off faster. These yellow handles are changing the, dr the drama of this. So you see that it is really slowing down. It starts off fast and it's really slowing down. Let's do that the opposite direction. See the difference? So on the graph editor one, just go and try all kind of different things with it. Now realize this is not changing the motion path. It's just changing how the speed does. On the next one, we're going to change the motion path and the speed. So if you think you understand that pretty well, let's move on to the next one called bounce. We're going to uh, try and make this bounce. Now I've already done it and I want you to kind of see what I have done. If you look at my motion path, uh, you can see I just have one bounce and then it goes off the screen. And then if you look at my speed editor, you can see that it, it's going to be really fast as it goes along, right? This is going to be really fast because you just dropped it. It's going to get really fast right here. Then as it goes up the curve, it's going to get slower and slower until it falls back down. So let's try and do this together. So first off, we've got this ball. You do need to make sure whenever you're doing something like this that the anchor point is in the middle. And we can see it is in the middle of this ball that I gave you. We are going to click P to get position open. Go to the beginning of our timeline and go ahead and turn on keyframing. So we want it to start. I wouldn't start it off the screen just because it makes it a little bit easier to deal with. Uh, we're going to go a little bit in time. And then we want it to fall down here. Right? It's going to bounce off a little bit of time and it's going to do something like this and then go back down. Hmm, we can fix that. <laughs> and then it'll just bounce off the screen. Okay, so it's not going to remember those weird bounce things. We need to actually change our motion path. So if you click on the motion path, and remember if you can't see your motion path, you need to go up into view and turn on show layer controls. So let's go to that first keyframe. And if you click on this motion path, you can just barely see there are these handles. And this is going to change the motion path. So we have one right here, and we have two right here. And notice that they are like a teeter-totter. If you've ever done anything in Illustrator, you will remember having to deal with this before. They are dependent on each other. They are attached. If you want to unattach them, you click and hold Alt, and that will unattach those two handles. After they have been broken, you do not have to click Alt anymore. So just click Alt and separate those. We're going to need to do the same thing on this one down here. So we're going to click Alt to separate the handles. And then this one needs just a little bit because it's kind of at the end. All right, let's see how this works. Okay, pretty good with our motion. Now we need to go think about how is our speed going to work. So let's turn on the speed graph and kind of think about this. So when it starts, it's not going to be going as fast as when it hits down here at the bottom. So we want that to be going fast and it's a little bit slower here. So, and I want that to be a pretty dramatic change. There we go. So it's going to start and it's going to get going really fast before it hits. Move this up just a little bit. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty good. Now when it gets to here, as it hits, it needs to really shoot off until it gets to the apex and then it starts to slow down again. So let's do something kind of like that. Let me see what this looks like. Not bad, not bad. 
And then this last one is kind of, it's just drizzling out. Like I, don't, I usually don't have a whole lot going on here, just a little bit. It's not too bad. Now we can do a lot more with this if we want. So let's try and add even more to it. But this is just a basic idea of how speed can really help. We need to add some squash and stretch in here uh, and add some rotation to really make this good. Now I've given you another one to try if you want to try and make something kind of like this. So let's try and make something like that. Oh my. All right, so let's turn on position keyframe, go to the beginning. I do want to start way up here. We're gonna have go one big one, kind of middle sized one, another medium sized one, and then boom. Once again, you're gonna click and split those with the Alt. Put these handles with the Alt. Now remember, as it goes through this, think about how a ball would actually work. It would kind of get lesser as it goes. In fact, by the time it's at the end, it's barely moving. All right, so before we deal with speed, I want us to deal with squash and stretch and stuff like that. So think about how a ball, as it's going through time, it would actually stretch itself out. And when it hits this, it would smush down. So we need to now bring scale into this issue. So if we hit the S key, we will be able to see scale. But the problem here is I want to be able to see my position keyframe at the same time. So you can hit Shift and P. Now you have just position and just scale open. You don't need to open up everything. We just want to be able to see those two things. So for scale, I want to turn off constrained portions because we need to smush it down and pull it back out. So go ahead and turn on keyframing at the very beginning and go to about halfway down. If the ball was going down, gravity would be pulling on it. So let's change the Y like gravity is pulling it down. Now remember exaggeration, so you need to make it even more than you think it would. Now one problem we have here is rotation. It needs to be kind of rotated, doesn't it? So let's add rotation into the situation. Shift R, now we have rotation. So let's go ahead and add a rotation keyframe there. Do you need to go back and add a first rotation keyframe? Let me add that. Using my keyframe buttons, right? I'm gonna to go to this one and we're just gonna rotate it so that it's kind of going the direction it needs to go. It's stretching out. All right, now let's go all the way down to here. By the time it gets to this keyframe, it needs to smush back down. So we're gonna smush it as if it's hitting. And once again, our rotation is a little bit off. So let's rotate it back down. That's good squash and stretch. Let's look, much better. Now that doesn't look good, how it's smushed down. So let's think about that again. When it gets to the top here, it needs to be stretched back out. Once again, it's kind of pulling on it and the rotation would be turning towards it. By the time it gets down to here, it needs to be smushed back down and the rotation needs to continue in the direction it was going. Let's kind of look at that. Yeah, that is what it would do. Smush, smush. Okay, go ahead and see if you can do the next one. I'll do that fast. And here's what I've got. Not bad. Now, do you think I need to change my motion path here? This one, it's kind of going down, which wouldn't make sense if there was a floor there. That's a little bit better. I think I might need a little bit more rotation here at the end. Do you see how that's doing? It almost like it's rolling away. So I'm going to go to my last rotation keyframe and give it some more rotation. I think that might help. Not bad. So the last thing we need to do is go mess with the speed editor and see if we can get that to look a little bit better. So when I open up the graph editor at this point, you see that it's giving me all of these keyframes, uh, the position, the scale, all of that. Don't let it frustrate you. For one, you can just hit the P to close all of, um, close everything but position. And notice that position is pink. So that's the one we're going to mess with. Now, obviously you could mess with the speed of all of these other keyframes, but I think that's a little bit overkill at this point. I'm gonna do a really simple speed graph here. Okay, it's not the greatest in the world, but you, can, you get the basic idea. You've got to really play around with the speed graph and see what you can do with it. So this is your basic intro to keyframe assistance, speed graph, motion graphs, and the 12 principles of animation.